and welcome to Warren Diabetes Limited Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participants in line will be in the listening room mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star, pin zero, and the touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now on the conference over to Mr. Anup Jari from CDR India. Thank you. I'm over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for joining us on Varun Beverages Q1 2020 Earnings Conference Call. You have with us Mr. Ravi Jaitoria, Chairman of the company, Mr. Varun Jaitoria, Whole Time Director, Mr. Raj Gandhi, Group CFO and Whole Time Director, Mr. Kapil Agarwal, CEO and Whole Time Director, and Mr. Vikas Bhatia, CFO of the company. We will initiate the call with opening remarks from the management following which we'll have the forum open for a question and answer session. Before we begin, I would like to point out that some statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature, and a disclaimer to this effect has been included in the earnings presentation shared with you earlier. I now request Mr. Ravi Jaipuria to make his opening remarks. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us on our earnings conference call. I hope all of you had the opportunity to go through our results presentation, which provides detail of our operational and financial performance for the first quarter ended March 31st, 2020. We started the new fiscal year on a strong note with healthy demand and robust volume. Growth across our domestic and international markets. This enabled us to deliver a top-line growth of 23%, EBITDA growth of 24%, and PAT growth of 50% during the quarter. However, a countrywide lockdown and similar restrictions in many of our international geographies during the last 10 days of March moderated both our domestic and international business performance during the quarter which would have otherwise been even better. Total sales volume were up 26.2% year-on-year in quarter 1, 2020. We registered double-digit volume growth in the month for January and February. However, organic sales volume got severely impacted in the last 10 days of March due to the lockdown measures. As a result, organic volume for the quarter declined by 13.7% in India and 9.3% on a consolidated basis. Over the last two months, worldwide economies and various industries across India and international markets have been facing an unprecedented situation due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Our primary focus during this challenging period has been towards undertaking all necessary measures to shore up our cash flows, ensure safety of our employees, business partners, communities, and to overall safeguard the interests of all our stakeholders. On the operational front, in compliance with government authorities, advisors, we have temporarily closed operations at our office across India and have already implemented work from home. As per the relaxations provided by the Government of India for essential services and particularly packaged food and beverages, VBL has got the permissions from respective state governments to operate its certain production facilities. These units are currently operational at a lower utilization level and we are undertaking all necessary measures to ensure and maintain the highest standards of hygiene and social distancing norms at our plants. In anticipation of the favorable uneconomic season, we have built up additional stock of inventory in the month of March. Encouragingly, we have been able to sell most of the inventory 
Furthermore, with recent relaxation in lockdown measures, we have also started to see an initial recovery in demand and in sync, we have steadily started production in most of our facilities. Our teams are also actively in contact with all our distributors in order to ensure streamlined deliveries and supplies. Our business model consisting of owned logistics, supply chain, systems and end-to-end -end infrastructure facilities provide adequate cushion to our business operations despite an industry-wide supply chain disruption in the country. We are also very encouraged that BBL has a healthy balance sheet and strong financial status, which we believe most certainly should see us through this disorderly time. To conclude, while we are currently witnessing curtailed demand both in India and in our international geographies as a result of the ongoing macro situation, we believe in the near term there should be a gradual bounce back in volumes. This will be enabled by easing of lockdown restrictions and restoration of consumer sentiment, as they will once again have normal access to beverages purchases, especially in a favorable summer season. Given the increasing demand that we are witnessing for our products prior to the lockdown, we are confident that once things stabilize, we will once again see encouraging growth and we will further strengthen our position as the leading player in the beverage industry. I would like Mr. Gandhi to provide highlights of the operations and financial performance. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon and a warm welcome to, the, to everyone joining us today. Let me provide an overview of the financial performance for the first quarter and the 31st March 2020. Revenue from operations existed for SIE GSC grew up 23.3% year on year in Q1 2020 to the level of 16,764.4 million while EBITDA increased by 24.2% to the level of 2,711.6 million. Total sales volume growth was robust at 26.2% at 114 million cases in Q1 2020 as compared to 90.3 million cases in Q1 2019. CSG constituted 67%, juice 7% and package drinking order 26% of the total sales volume in Q1 2020. The sales volume growth was supported by steady performance in India as well as in the international territories in the months of January and February. However, post-lockdown restrictions imposed by the government due to COVID-19 pandemic Organic sales volume was severely impacted in the last 10 days of March. Resultantly, organic volumes for the quarter declined by 13.7% in India and 9.3% on a consolidated basis. Realization per case has come down by 2.3% in Q1 2020, essentially on, the, on account of lower uh, sales realization on dollar conversion in Zimbabwe. On the profitability front, EBITDA increased by 24.2% to the level of 2,711.6 million in Q1 2020 from rupees 2,183.8 million in Q1 2019. EBITDA margins were steady as a later part of savings in raw material costs were offset by higher fixed costs and made negligible sales during the last 10 days of March. Gross margins expanded by 300 basis points year on year due to favorable PET chip prices. Depreciation and finance costs were increased by 36.4% and 47.3% respectively, in line with the increase in scale of business post consolidation of South and West India sub territories with effect from 1st May 2019. <coughs> The exceptional items for the current quarter represents provision for impairment in the value of certain plant and equipment, glass bottles and plastic shells amounting to rupees 665.3 million. I would now like to update you on the tax branch. Following the changes in the corporate tax structure, we have made an assessment of the impact 
and decided to continue with the existing tax structure until utilization of accumulated minimum alternate tax credit and expiry of other tax benefits tax holidays are available. In accordance with the end ASQL income taxes, the company is also required to revisit its deferred tax balances for amounts that are expected to reverse in future when the company would migrate to the new tax resign. The company has revised its outstanding deferred tax balances and written back an amount of rupees 731.85 million to the statement of profit and loss. To conclude, in these challenging times as an organization, we have instituted some cost rationalization initiatives and optimum working capital measures to conserve cash flows and ensure steady profitability. The company has also not arranged moratorium for the debt repayments and has been timely servicing all its debt obligations. Overall, VDL is solid and stable for our focus and our focus remains on generating strong free cash flows over the coming years. On the whole, we look forward to delivering a sustainable operational and financial performance going ahead. On that note, I come to an end of opening remarks and would like to now ask the moderator to open the lines for the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question? I think press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to unmute yourself in the question queue, you may press star into participants requested to use handset for asking the question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for the moment while the question is here assembled. The first question is from the line of Vivek Maheshwari from Jeffrey's India. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good evening everyone. Uh, my first question is on if you can give some color on April trend that, uh, that uh, we have seen on the ground and uh, where would be, if you can quantify where would be you know, capacity utilization at this point of time, uh, uh, you know, so anything on, on uh, how things are on the ground right now will be really helpful. See, it's very difficult to give you exact because every day one state is opening, one state is shutting down. So to give you any prediction where we are going to be, but the only thing we can tell you, all our plants are operational now and we are not running three shifts, that is for sure. But all our plants are uh, operational and we are in a position to supply whatever the demand is, which is picking up every day as the markets are opening up. So, 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 it's, uh, so are, you, are you suggesting that, you know, it's not that uh, every day is better than yesterday to that extent? Well, every day is getting better because as the markets are opening up, but it's so early to say because the markets have just started opening up from yesterday. Okay. So I think it will take a few days once we see what the normalization of market happens. But our volumes are going up and uh, we are quite uh, satisfied the way it is going in the circumstances what they are. Okay. Uh, the second bit is on the, you know, Mr. Jaipur, how concerned are you about, let's say, institutional and out of home segment? Because that is, that is the piece which will take time to come. Uh, to come back, right? And how big will be, you know, that for, let's see, your company for the industry as a whole, and uh, what are your thoughts on that segment? Well, institutional, clearly, there is no, very little institutional sale because all hotels, all uh, restaurants, everything is shut. So there's no question of institutional sale happening. On the go has reduced drastically because there's no people on the market. But as I said, we are in peak season, they have started opening, people have started coming out and that's what we need to see in the next week, 10 days, how it is going to react and how many people are allowed to come in the market. So to predict anything without actually seeing what is going to happen in the market is very difficult. Okay. And how big, uh, let's say, institutional and out of home would be broadly? No, institutional is not so large for us. It's under 10%, so it's not so large for us. 
and on the go is definitely large but uh, on the go there is some sales which are already happening people are some markets are open some states are becoming covid free so it all depends how many markets now they are talking of opening the markets in green and orange zones so if they start opening we will see most of our sales coming back of course not 100% but i you know to really actually guesstimate anything at the moment is very difficult because i can't predict how many markets they are going to open sure sure i understand uh, the other bit is on the gross margins in this quarter and with you know oil prices uh, uh you know moving further down and uh, you know generally uh, a pull back in soft commodity prices what will be your outlook on uh, margins uh, um well, the margins are definitely looking much healthier the only thing is because the volumes are going to be top line is not in our hands but we are still going to maintain our margins so even with lesser volumes we will still maintain our margins so because of uh, uh, soft uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, raising prices have come down drastically sugar is also down comparatively not that much uh, difference but it makes a big difference to our performance so that is going to help us uh, this year okay and lastly mr gandhi what would be uh, the you know the repayment in 2020 on the on the debt side and uh, uh, you know uh, current debt and current cash uh, position on the balance sheet as of 31st march uh luckily you know if i had to uh, you know provide the statement uh, the in covid one was basically uh, you know more uh, uh, you know we were focused on uh, the uh, you know on our cash flow repayments obligations bank covenants which uh, you know uh, you know when uh, chairman uh, you know pointed out we are having a very healthy balance sheet and with a strong cash flow idea was that uh, you know first we ensured that and uh, uh, today our 100% of uh, cash credit limits are all uh, available they are vacant and uh, we have uh, you know with the yesterday's opening up of new territories and the cash flow coming in we have already started giving wherever some acl for there we have started asking banks to take an extra bit payment so that we want first either by you know whatever the cash flows are coming or by way of conversion into the long term certain loan because uh, what had happened is we got the uh, interest arbitrage and there were certain loans in anticipation of uh, term loans which were even for 21 so we had prepaid in january so all those after that conversion we are we have already uh, broadly 90 plus percentage they have come in a point uh, where in 10 days we will have zero obligation to be serviced as far as the debt obligation is concerned so that was the first objective second uh, on the margins when you were saying uh, and you highlighted uh, that uh, because of the softening of the commodities we will have uh, some advantage in our margins you are very right but uh, on the other hand uh, operating leverage on a higher volume which is only available to us in the busy season of quarter ending april to june will be partially gone away but uh the, both along with the uh, you know uh the marketing expense or uh, the uh, the because today people are happy if they are having the material available to them so if we are able to ensure the delivery to them when they need it uh we don't have to you know do much of push or spend on the uh, push of the product so wherein uh, these things uh, for the second idea had been that we maintain our margins the third thing is on revenue you know your question which i think coming that how much we will be doing with the way of capacity or the sales or demand i mean that is something which is beyond anyone's control today if we have taken care of the first two things i think we give a pat at our back right right and could you quantify the debt number please our uh, debt obligation uh, out of term loans was 476 and uh, some prepayments that happened yesterday some are going to happen this week and uh, these uh, uh, you know i think by this month and hopefully we will have uh, taken care of fully there were small scls also which again uh, you know to a large extent uh, would have been provided by this month and right and march 20 debt was how much uh, gross debt in cash uh 
gross width was uh, you know, around 32, 33 hundred. It was at the same level. It didn't go up. Okay. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. That's on the line of Sashan Kodar from ADIA. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, okay, uh, you explained about the uh, improving uh, demand uh, incrementally, but just uh, uh, subjectively, I mean, obviously, uh, it is difficult to point out numbers, but subjectively, uh, given that uh, people are wary of drinking cold things uh, at this point of time, uh, is, it, uh, is it looking like a tough situation for uh, volumes uh, for the next three months altogether? Because this is an important season for us. Well, it's not looking great, but at the same time, I think uh, it is reasonably, we are reasonably in good shape. And as the markets are opening, I don't think people are shying away from drinking cold drinks. And uh, the demand is improving on a day-to-day -day basis. Our volumes are going up. And I think if we can continue like this and the government keeps opening up the territories, I think and with the additional margins because of uh, raw material prices being cheaper, I think we'll be not, uh, not in a bad shape. And our margins will be quite healthy. So on this uh, on the same line, sir, uh, this this business being very distribution intensive, uh, and and uh, I think uh, uh, even distribution at this point of time would be impacted. So from both perspective, the 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 financial health of your own distributors uh, versus your competitors, and uh, your ability to reach uh, to your distribution points or your distributors' ability to reach the market. Is it is it any difference between you? Is there any difference between you and your competitor at this point of time? Well, I don't want to answer my competition, but we are able to reach the market. We are uh, we come under essential commodity, and uh, we are able to reach to our distributors and our distributors, except in uh, the red zones, which which is completely sealed and pandemic. Apart from that, they are able to go everywhere and uh, they are able to distribute. It's only that the number of outlets uh, which used to be there are not, uh, that many outlets are not open. So we are servicing whatever outlets are open. And as more outlets are opening on a daily basis, our sales are going up. Hmm. So you, you made a passing comment about the... Uh, yeah, about the support, about the working capital requirement that you are servicing faster and therefore probably working capital requirements, uh, the inventories uh, are getting drawn down. But have you seen any demand from your distributors for uh, any working capital support? Have you extended any of that? No, they have not asked for anything and we are supporting our distributors wherever we feel it is necessary, but it is not uh, that bad. And uh, it's not and looking so challenging as uh, because the volumes are dropping, but not to that level that we'll have to have a crisis. So. Okay. And, and what is the typical uh, inventory that work uh, that uh, that your distributors would have at any point of time? Number so only a distributor carries between five to seven days uh, inventory. Okay. Okay. So, uh, on, on cost savings that you talked about, which are the areas of large cost savings? And, and if you could talk about the raw material uh, decline that has happened, typically what happens is that industry, whenever there is a cost decline, uh, we start getting uh, seeing more offers in the market. Uh, but this, is, this time the situation is uh, different. Uh, everyone is struggling. Uh, is it likely that uh, the, the, the uh, gross profitability would, be, would actually be improved to take care of this challenging time by the industry altogether? See, uh, here, uh, there are, uh, you know, major components I will highlight and there may be smaller, uh, you know, various where, you know, in the uh, time of crisis, people work line by line. But the biggest thing, mm. uh, one is the commodities which are softening. And the second is, mm. uh, you know, the focus is on availability of the goods, then uh, uh, getting any scheme or promotion. So those are another uh, heads under which there will be uh, sales. And uh, third is if our plants or offices are shut, 
you know, all the overheads or administering overheads, starting from power, electricity, tra transport, conveyance, uh, travel, travel is totally blocked. So all those things are, uh, you know, becoming savings and uh, helping us. And uh, then apart from this, on your question of distributors credit, distributors we don't sell on credit and, uh, you know, normally when they are in this trade, they plan uh, their working capital on a larger scale. When the base is smaller mm -hmm. and they are coming to us for replenishing goods, means they have realized their product, they, they don't sell on credit. And they are not stocking as much as they normally in the season month group. So rather there is no question of working capital shortage with our distributors coming in. Okay. Uh, on the, on the uh, uh, last question, on the EBITDA margin outlook uh, uh, that Mr. Jakuria gave, uh, that that could be protected despite uh, drop in volumes because of cost savings. So we are talking about EBITDA margin here being stable. The EBITDA percentage, uh, we are making sure that our, our EBITDA percentage remains protected because of uh, uh, advantage in commodities and uh, raw materials. Volume, of course, there will be a gap, so which we can't answer how, what the volume gaps are going to be. So, but percentage yeah. uh, will be protected. No, that is very hard thing. Thank you very much, sir. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in this conference. We request that you limit your questions to two for participants only. You can come back to the questions room for a follow-up question. The next question is from the line of Prashant Kuti from Sundara Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, so first is just a, a bookkeeping question. Uh, there was an exceptional item of uh, 655 million. Uh, it's been mentioned uh, in regard to the provisions for impairment. Could you probably uh, a little more on the same thing. What was it regarding? In fact, uh, uh, if you notice, there are three items, uh, uh, you know, this time. Third, actually, some of the note, in, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure if they're or not. Uh, one uh, has come in uh, in the accounting standard 12 on income tax, uh, you know, to take care of September 2019's ordinance. Uh, we are supposed to recalculate our debtor tax liability and if we, there are intentions of switching over to the new regime of uh, tax laws. So any excess uh, different tax liability needs to be reversed in the books. And uh, if you see last uh, quarterly accounts, when uh, this question came up from our auditors, that time it was that because the financial year of the government, the assessment year is going to be, you know, start of that is going to happen after 31st March. So we will do at the year end. So now this time when we were making a review, 73 crore and all figure was coming as uh, deferred tax liability. So that is uh, provided on the tax thing. So second item which uh, is uh, uh, in the accounts, which is a big ticket item, which uh, you are highlighting and your question is around, that is the exceptional item, that is uh, uh, the glass items, uh, the glass bottles whose mix in the COVID-19 was reduced. So we use this as an opportunity and uh, as a prudent policy we decided to take an entire bank because uh, we had enough, uh, you know, profits and uh, uh, the actually only one plant but uh, we had two plants here. So there was a glass line and 160 BPM. All of the new lines, you know, because of the operating uh, benefit, we put 600 BPM, that was 60 BPM. So these two we have taken an impairment. This was a bottle plant two years back. So idea is if we can reduce our fixed cost of that plant going forward. So we have taken impairment of these two things. So land building is uh, absolutely in order and they can be used either for warehouse or whatever purposes. So that has not been impaired, but uh, the plant machinery glass bottles half the depth the shelves has been written off, uh, has been provided uh, impaired in the books. And the third item, Prashant, you will notice last time it was discussed. Uh, if you will remember, we have, uh, I think, on 21st of uh, December, on the uh, stock exchanges had informed, uh, there was a press report in Nepal on the taxes of our 
certain uh, merchandisers, certain vendors of the merchandise, they had not deposited that uh, in over a period of six years, amounting to rupees five crore eighty lakhs. So, on which the investigation department had found them and served them notices, and after that, they filed a charge sheet against the company also, apart from those vendors. So this VAT and then they also, you know, to the court, they in the charge sheet stated that income tax also should have been levied an interest equivalent amount and penalty, talking to about 40 crore. This may became a substantial amount and uh, before even we were serviced any demand on the companies, you know, as a record has not come even till date. But however, uh, you know, there is a charge sheet, we got a copy of that and what we have done is we have provided for this amount, although uh, on the auditor's insistence, last year we had uh, shown it as contingent, but this quarter we have provided for. So these are the three uh, big ticket exceptional items in our accounts, uh, so which I just stated. So this exceptional issue you told, 665 also includes this provision for this charge sheet filed as well, right? Uh, no. It's, uh, this exceptional is only for the impairment. The third is, is uh, the is 40 crore. This is the third one. The narration of this I was finding, I didn't see in my presentation, but uh, I therefore thought uh, I must highlight this in the call. Okay, so that was not, that has not been taken in this particular quarter? No, this is another item. Because this okay. is not coming under single item, this Provision of this, uh, uh, you know, the tax portion, there may be income tax provision, that will be above the line, interest is under the interest portion, uh, so the penalty will be again above the line. So all those things, uh, you know, because the treatment of this has to be, and uh, something may be sitting in, uh, you know, of course 100% of this actually will be sitting in the Nepal balance sheet, Nepal PNL, but uh, in a consolidated manner I thought all these we pick the items I must narrate. Sure. Uh, so moving on to a couple of questions from my end. One is uh, basically, uh, like you said, as part of essentials, I believe juices and uh, packaged water will be essential. Uh, uh, so to that extent, sir, how would have April and maybe in terms of until now, uh, in terms of uh, activity from packaged water is concerned? Level of active uh, utilization of this. Yes. Uh, Prashant, package water uh, is essential, no doubt, but somehow we have uh, noticed uh, during this pandemic that its consumption and the sales uh, mostly comes on the move or in the events of parties or at the institutional sales. Unfortunately, all these were blocked, so the mix of water you will find is coming down is a low value item. Because the sale price of a water is about 30, 33 percent of the beverage sale. Uh, margin wise it may be, percentage wise it may be same. So that is decline. If we are see, if we will see a, a decline in the volumes in the next quarter. So uh, when we say, you know, we, we are attempting to at least protect our margin profile. So one of the comforting factors other than the cost uh, of the commodities or uh, uh, the marketing or promotion expenses. The third is that the mix of a uh, low value item also is going to be lesser in this quarter. So that's another, uh, you know, line item which is going to help us in maintaining our uh, margin profiles. So at a company level, if I want to probably assume, let's say, uh, let's say April and May, uh, in terms of obviously, this is the quarter where you almost do about 45 to 50 percent of the business. Uh, so, typically, uh, precise, precisely on a global basis, uh, this quarter is uh, uh, 39 percent, India is 41 percent. Okay, 40 percent. Okay, so in that case, sir, uh, given how your production facilities are have been operating, and you said your uh, is operating at one shift as well. On an average, what is the utilization level? Uh, it's selectively we are using. It's not that regularly on every day basis. You see, all plants, we have got approval. We have got into, we have organized, we have followed the protocol to start. And as and when, wherever from freight angle and the demand angle we need, we take the production. And uh, if it's not needed, we don't 
still in that case also we don't run it uh, because we don't want to pile up uh, finished goods in the entry. Okay. Okay. And last question from Ayan sir, uh, between urban and rural, what is your urban urban rural split sir? And secondly, uh, how how is rural been doing as compared to urban? Because uh, rural somehow well. Well, and right. uh, in urban it all depends which, which which city becomes more red zone or which city becomes green or orange zone. No, no. So, so I was asking on a C by 19 basis, not not the current uh, on a normal C by 19 basis for the yeah. entire VDL, so west, south, and north, of course, put together. Yeah. Yeah. What would be a distribution of sales between let's say top 10 cities? Uh, the next 20 or top 30 cities and the rest of India. Oh, but it's very difficult to answer. This is exactly what I'm saying because every day it keeps changing. Some day they see Delhi, some day they see Chennai, sometime they see. Uh... So no, I, I meant to ask Ravi uh, on a normal uh, normal operation. So C by 19. I'm not asking yes. for the current month. On a C by 19. Yeah. C by 19. What are you saying? C by 19, what was our distribution of sales, let's say top 10 cities or top 30 cities, versus the rest of India? Uh, I think totally, uh, I'll, uh, I can give you this answer for this slightly modified. Uh, we have uh, classification under three heads which you also before stated, uh, urban, semi-urban and rural. Rural is 30, another 30 yeah. is on the semi-urban, semi-urban definition for us is a, a, which is uh, urban but a population less than five and uh, uh, there uh, you can see uh, I mean uh, another 30 percent or uh, 25 percent so the balance uh, f uh, 50, 45, 60 is uh, to, uh, delegated to the urban. Okay, right. No, no, that would be awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, do we move on to the next question? The next question from the line of John Khan from Amir. Please go ahead. Hi, I just I want to ask uh, have you been talking about um with other distributors about whether you can put them from other franchises? Um, because there's some talk that they are with and do you think that there are groups at large distributors who might not be as well as a life as you? We can't hear you. The question is not coming out clear. Yes. Is it better? Yeah, maybe it's clear. Okay. Yeah. Please go a little Have slow, maybe talking? it'll be better. Have you been talking about poaching distributors of other franchisees? Um, and other risks that um, large distributors who might not be as well capital, capitalized that go out of business? Uh, not exactly. Uh, well, we have not lost any distributor of ours, so I don't know. And we are pretty well presented all over the country. So at the moment, uh, we have not had a problem like that. Okay. And what is your level of um, concentrate in your inventory and how long could they last in like the warehouses? So I was told that it, uh, concentrate lasts during like three to six months, uh, is that correct? Uh, no, no, that's the validity of the product, but normally we don't carry inventory more than 30 days. And uh, that is also in the beginning of the season, otherwise we carry inventory less than 15 days. So okay. uh, we are not uh, going to face any challenge on inventory being stuck with us because all our plants are now in production. So we are providing fresh goods and if there is some movement required from one state to the other, we are doing that to make sure that none of our products become BBD. Okay. okay. And uh, one last question. Uh, have you spoken to PepsiCo and um, how are you guys working together on anything and what are their thoughts? and of the environment, maybe in India and I mean, you have other countries in uh, like Africa as well. Um, I, how are you guys working together? We have spoken to Pepsi, but you know, each country is different. Some countries in Europe and USA, that you know, a lot of the 
uh, uh, you know the uh, the modern trade is all open, so a lot of their consumption is at home and modern trade. So their effects are much lower. Africa, the effects are not that big. The it has come down, but very slightly because none of the markets have shut down. So each country is completely different, and Pepsi is there with us, and they are fully wanting to support if if, uh, if we need their help. Okay, and um, are they offering any supports? I mean, uh, maybe you don't need it, but I mean, if they are offering. Don't know the. the we have problem is in. in we will understand it if when whatever is required. I'm sure they will be being one of the largest bottlers of their system. I'm sure they will come and support if we ask for something. All right, great. Thank you. I think the next question is in the line of Jeremy from Matthew Asia. Please go ahead. Yeah, can you hear me there? Yeah. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Ah uh, yeah yeah hi uh, yeah thanks for taking my question just just one from me I mean you you've indicated thus far that it's more an issue of ability to supply um, as opposed to maybe demand but I'm just just wanted to get a sense I, I'm not really clear or have a handle on the affordability of your products you know to what degree it's an essential I mean it's it's obviously more of a discretionary but a small Small t- ticket discretionary item. So, given you know potential demand damage, unemployment, you know income loss, to to what degree should we be worried, or are you concerned about potential demand disruption? Well, I don't think so. In the long term, this will come down. Our products are such small tickets. You're talking of 20 and 30 rupee products. I mean. The demand which the person is going to cut first is houses, cars, uh, white goods, you know, expensive air conditioning, you know, depending on what his capability are. But nobody is going to start cutting on 20 rupee products, you know. Of course, unless until the whole country becomes unemployed, then of course I can't answer you. So, I don't think we have seen actually the demand going down. Wherever the shops are open, they are all selling our products and people enjoying our products. So I don't see that. It's just a question of making the product available because there's so limited number of outlets open. And, of course, the hotels, the institutions are shut, so that demand has come down. And our go-to market has slightly come down because the go-to market is not happening right now. So those demands will will affect, but as it starts opening up, people start coming to the market. I think we will be able to capture most of our uh, demand. Thank you. I hear the next question from the man of Rahul Ranade from Goldman Sachs Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just one clarification on the point of the EBITDA margin. So, are you saying that EBITDA margin will be protected for the calendar year 20? Mm-hmm. Okay. We are talking of EBITDA margin being protected for uh, the percentage terms. Yeah, that's right. But but is it for the year? Because for, for the quarter, the June quarter is uh, like exceptionally big for you. So, but I don't think. Yeah. Hello. No, percentage terms even in the quarter, even though it's quite big year, we can protect our margin. Hello. My line is March, so you're saying uh, in percentage terms, I didn't touch it. Percentage terms are better margins will be protected because even though the volume will be, the top line will be smaller, because of our uh, conservative cost cuts and also um, uh, the raw material and uh, prices being softer, we'll be able to preserve our. Uh, in the market. Thank you for watching on the big bar level. So, so, like, are you saying this level of margin will be set up for you? Sir, we will not be out of the front You are not audible. Sorry, I can't hear you.
चीज तो है Yeah, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, just in our category, what would be the extent of on-the-go consumption contribution to the category, and what would be the extent of out-of-home consumption of the category? You know, the whole category is changing. Everything is changing. All the logistics, all the way of thinking, all the way of drinking, everything is changing. It's very difficult because lot of consumption is happening at home now, which never used to happen. So, I think it's too early to. No, no. So until last year, so my my question is not about this year, but let's say until last year was on the go. Last year, thirty to forty percent of the consumption was uh, on the go. On the go. Okay. And my second question is uh, that uh, for April uh, there was virtually uh, none of the plant operational, right? Uh, for us, or were there any? Some op- started operational by twentieth of April. By 20th of April. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anand Shah from Master Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Just a few questions. So, firstly, if you can uh, break down the 114 million cases that you did uh, in terms of the domestic and international as to uh, what was the number. Just one second. Yeah. India, we did uh, ninety four. India was ninety four million. India was 94 million out there, and the rest as well as was international. Okay, and uh, within this, uh, you did highlight that you know, uh, despite Janpet being uh, double digit in March, obviously uh, was a drag, and hence so there was a 40 percent odd uh, organic decline. So, I mean, would that equate to what 60, 70, 80 percent decline in March? And would that mean even uh, before the 10-day lockdown? March, was, March was negative by 31 percent. 31 percent. But being March, being a bigger month than January, February yeah, is affected yeah. overall. So the skew within the quarter itself, March would be more like 40-50 percent, perhaps within the quarter. I'm saying close to it, maybe not 50 percent, but maybe 45 percent, 45 percent. Because actually the business starts after Holi, so yeah. okay, okay. So the preloading for the summer and all starts. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, why the bigger impact of the 10-day lockdown also. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And if you can give any color uh, prior to uh, the COVID, I mean, in terms of Giant Pep, how uh, Southwest was playing out. I mean, in terms of you were investing in terms of scaling it up, uh, you know, kind of traction that you're seeing in the business, uh, any share gains or any initial signs of, you know, uh, business getting strengthened there. I mean, if you look at January, February, we grew practically 100% in each month. So. Okay. You're seeing the Southwest. Southwest business uh, practically doubled. Overall, yeah. overall we grew. Overall we grew, but uh, organically we grew at uh, about 14 percent in uh, January and about 42 percent in February. Wow. Okay. 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 And uh, lastly, uh, the uh, the uh, you know the the organic growth in the international business. Uh, how much was that? Just one second. Eight percent. International has been eight percent. Eight percent. So that clearly is uh, tracking much better there. So I mean, are you are you seeing at least similar traction there in terms of uh, the lockdown not being as stringent as India and some yeah, of the other markets? Well, unfortunately, April lockdown was uh, is severe in Nepal and Sri Lanka as bad as India. So that okay. will pull down slightly, but. Uh, Uh, Africa has not been locked down as badly, so it's not uh, the numbers are not affected that much. Also, uh, and also Africa is the uh, winter season for us. Yes. It's the opposite season, so our volumes for uh, for that season is much lower. Okay. Okay. So perfect. That's it for me. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anirudh Doshi from ICC Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks, sir. So, uh, 
सर इन टर्म्स ऑफ गोइंग फॉरवर्ड सिटी यूटिलाइजेशन एटलीस्ट द प्लांट्स आर ऑपरेटिंग राइट नाउ सो लेट से फॉर मी वॉट वुड बी द प्लान और वॉट यू आर लुकिंग एट इन टर्म्स ऑफ कैपेसिटी यूटिलाइजेशन और वॉट वॉज इट फॉर एप्रिल टू again is uh, you know the what we are asking is if a new when they will open up the full country it is difficult i say it will all depend on how uh, the government decides in uh, how op- they open up the country so the plan utilization will be based on the opening of the country okay so but uh, so in terms of march we have seen that uh, there was a 31 percent volume drop so uh, are we saying that the situation in april uh, and the situation in uh, may is relatively better than uh, what we had seen in march so april could have been better because april was uh, shut down in the first 15 20 days completely but uh, but hopefully may we are hoping it might be better we don't know we are hoping it all depends as they said they are going to open up we are all hoping and uh, they open up here yes, it will be better okay okay sir and uh, in terms of driving the sales are we uh, having any additional schemes etc for the dealer push the sales to gain market share as we are rather cutting schemes not giving additional schemes because right now the dealer is more interested in making sure the product is available more than asking for the uh, skin okay okay so we have cut the trade schemes uh, and which have will help so we expect our margins to be better yes okay so and uh, lastly if you can uh, just uh, uh, we discuss the 40 crores provision uh, tax provision so sorry uh, i could not hear it properly but that is provided in this quarter uh, is it correct and as we move from 35% tax rate to 25% tax rate so whatever the deferred tax adjustment needs to be done that is also done in this quarter is it correct Uh, yes, the tax provision of our uh, was the reference to Nepal. The deferred tax liability to give effect of the accounting standard 12 was the issued. That is uh, for India. And the third exception item we mentioned was uh, uh, about the impairment. That's correct. So that 40 crores uh, liability is in a way we have accepted that whenever if the demand comes, we would be paying that uh, liability. Is it correct? Uh, we have not accepted the liability. We have just provided. If no, no. Liability comes uh, if we receive the demand. The first thing is there is a charge sheet filed, and uh, the party is the third party. But one option is that uh, we don't provide and uh, go ahead. Uh, another is we have provided. We have kept provision in our books, and we are moving ahead. So the payment will actually happen once. Uh, demand is raised and we exhaust uh, the uh, the rights under the prevailing law which are available to us that uh, will arise only then but uh, it is something you know uh, uh, if you take a few out of our earlier calls if you see in zimbabwe there was a time uh, for a change uh, uh, liability every quarter we were providing and we had uh, uh, a provision uh, for the exchange valuation now the two quarters uh, Talking to something like ten and thirty crore. Later on, the government of Zimbabwe, Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, they had given us the undertaking that because this foreign uh, exchange uh, was invested in this country on our commitment, and they will honour uh, the repayment at the original rate. So uh, we are keeping that provision also till it actually you know materialises. So these are the few things that the student policy we go by that advice and. Uh, We have provided, but uh, we have not accepted this liability. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, so lastly, is the uh, impairment of the assets plant that we have done? Is it over, or do you see some uh, more uh, right of in your quarter two? Ah, uh, I do. See, if we have made a review as that as one day back. If it's going to come in next June, we would have done something like that right away. Uh, impairment is something which you know, uh, you know, you 
actually see a lot of things. No, I think they've already done the impairment. I don't think there's anything for them. Okay, that's simple. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The so next question is from the line of Bharat Shah from AFC Investment Manager. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, March uh, 20, gross borrowings is 3,200 crores. I can't hear you. March 2020, gross borrowings are 3,200 crores. What is the current figure? Uh, the current figure is the same. Uh, it's the same. Uh, as of 31st March, uh, as of 31st March, today's figure may be, uh, may be same or maybe slightly lower. And what is the level of cash on the balance sheet? Uh, we have, uh, actually, we don't have cash, but we have uh, cash credit maybe for 476 crores, which are uh, totally free. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanal Shah from Carnelian Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, as far as the cash credit limit of 476 crores goes, so just wanted to understand, have you utilized anything or this is something uh, uh, which is completely available, nothing utilized uh, as of now? This is available, it is available to us. Okay, and sir, uh, the other part of the question you answered before, but just wanted to confirm, we don't see any balance sheet risk or balance sheet risk since the operations are very small when it comes to uh, our international operations. Is that understanding correct? There is no, we don't see any risk at the moment. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next person is in the line of Nikunj Gala from Principal Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for you know taking my questions. So my first question is, uh, is the employee expense of you know, 800 crore approximately in CY19 Hello. Uh, hello, Mr. Nikunjwala. Hello. Uh, hello, Mr. Nikunj. Are you able to hear us? Yeah, yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah. So my question is, uh, our employee expense of, you know, approximately 800 crore C Y 19, how much would be the temporary or contractual labor expense and how much would be the permanent expense, permanent employee expense? Uh, maybe uh, 60% is permanent and the balance is at the clock. 60%? Yeah. Third party or distributors or uh, the... About 60%. Okay. And uh, sir, secondly, uh, ex-employee cost, uh, how much would be our, you know, fixed overheads per month? Uh, seventy-five crores. About seventy-five crores. Okay, seventy-five crores per month. Okay, thank you. And then lastly, sir, uh, you know, just want to understand from the capacity perspective, uh, you know, last time when we acquired two territories in Southwest, can you just um, help us with the breakdown of the capacity in uh, CST and water and juices segment? In medium case, would do. Uh, basically, uh, the southern base was uh, about 50% of our existing footprint of India, and uh, exist, uh, and their capacity uh, utilization was quite low, so there is enough headroom there. No, 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 sir, no, no utilization. I'm just asking from the absolute capacity perspective. Uh, how much would be the southwest? Uh, I think offline, if you contact, uh, we will be able to provide you. Uh, I don't yeah, have sure. a number at this moment. Sure. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks for your input. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I now have the conference. Over to the management for your closing comments. Uh, thank you uh, once again for your interest in sport. We will continue to stay engaged. 
Please be in touch with our industry relations team for any further details or discussions. Look forward to interacting with you soon. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Varun Raghavan, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us. I mean, an hour this next month. Thank you.